Welcome back to Maintenance Minute. I'm Jim V. Brock. In today's episode, we're going to learn how to fix this settling crack. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Maintenance Minute. I'm Jim V. Brock. And today we're out on a job site and we're going to fix a very common problem in most older homes. This is a settling crack that appeared in the drywall. This does not necessarily mean that there is a structural issue here. As a realtor, I see these uh, notations on inspection reports all of the time that there's a settling crack present, may indicate that there is a structural issue, 99% of the time, this has nothing to do with a structural issue. This is just simply that this house is several decades old and it has rested into a different spot than when it was built. So the way you can find out if this is an active movement is you can fill this hole and then if it shows up again over time um, or gets bigger over time, then you may want to have somebody take a look at what's going on below this point. But just for cosmetics, this is a very easy fix. One of the things you could do is take a vinyl spackling product that you can get at your big box retailer, and you can simply work that down into these cracks before you paint it. Now, because of the unevenness of this, you're probably still gonna see this crack if you use this method. But today I'm gonna to show you how to fix this properly using drywall mud and drywall tape. Okay, for the first method, I've got this vinyl spackling product, and you just simply take it with your finger and you work it down into the crack, just like this. And you just wanna make sure that you get all of the, ex the excess of it off as you go along, just like this, and wipe it off. Now, like I say, you might be able to see this crack still, even though you filled it when you paint this. And this is not the truly professional way to fix this. This would be a cheap, quick way if you didn't feel confident in doing the drywall. If you decided that you wanted to fix this properly, what you need to do is get you some drywall mud, and you're gonna go along here, and you're gonna just put a nice coat of drywall mud on here all the way up the crack. And you wanna work that down into the crack, all the way up through here. You really want to work that down into that crack. Now, if it's soft behind there, you probably ought to fix what's back there. Um, but in this case, the wall is solid. So the next step is we're just going to take our drywall and make a bed, a glue bed, for the tape. This is the drywall tape. And we're just simply going to put it over the crack and up tight against the frame or the door jam or the window jam or trim, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to just squeegee that down onto, onto the tape, just like that. You want to get all the as much of the liquid out from under it as you can as you work this down, because otherwise that'll show up as a bubble. So you just want to work that drywall mud back out from underneath it. Squeegee it out the best you can there. Okay. And then you're going to smooth this off with just a little extra on top. Just like this. And remember you can sand all this off in a minute. So there we go. We're just going to clean that all up and make a nice clean joint like that. Okay, the next coat you're gonna put on thinner. So each time you do a coat, it's thinner and thinner and thinner. This time, you're just gonna come along here and you're gonna fill in any imperfections that you've got along the side of the tape. So again, the less mud, the better as you do this. The less mud, the better. You really wanna let that dry a good long time. I didn't let this dry probably as long as I should have for video purposes, but you wanna just smooth this out and you're just feathering the edge of that tape off. So we're just gonna feather this out, make a nice clean feather. And again, I'm, I'm still using, I didn't mention it before, the first coat is done with a four inch knife. Normally I'll use a six inch knife for the second one and then a nine or 12 inch knife for the last one. 
Okay, so I'm gonna leave that like that. This time I'm gonna let it dry overnight, and then tomorrow we'll come back and put another coat on there and begin sanding. All right, I've let this uh, dry overnight. I've let the joint dry overnight. And so what I've done this morning is I've got a little tray here. I put some of my drywall mud in here and I've mixed a little water into it. And I've blended it down to about a mayonnaise-like consistency because our final coat, we want to go on very thin. So uh, get you some kind of container, just put a little bit of water in there, not very much. It won't take much at all to thin this down and make it mayonnaise-like. And now we're going to go up and put it on the joint. Now, I let my joint dry overnight, and I've got my mud here that I just mixed down with a little bit of water. And you can tell I've got a little bit wider knife today than I had yesterday. This one's about an 8-inch knife, and the nice thing about it uh, is that it's going to reach out just a little bit further to feather this joint out a bit. You know, ultimately, uh, if you had a difficult joint, you may end up with a 12-inch knife and have mud way out here. This crack was pretty easy to fix, so I don't have to worry about it. Now, if I want to check my work, I can just place this knife up against the wall in different places. And as I do that, if daylight shines through the blade and the wall, then I know I have either a high spot or a low spot. Um, if it rocks, I have a high spot. If I can see the daylight, then I've got a low spot, and I need to fill that just a little bit. So I'm going to take my watered-down mud and just come on here a little bit and just smooth this out. And don't, don't worry about areas like this and up here necessarily because you're going to sand that off with like a 110, I mean a 180 or 200, 220 sanding block when it's totally done. So all we're doing here is literally just filling in any imperfections that may be there due to you know, a uh, uh, low spot or high spot. That's why we thin this way down this time. Less is better. That's the important message for drywalling. Less is better. So there we go. If you, I'm just smoothing this out to where that's going to lay in there nice and flat, just like this. And this joint's doing very well. Whoops. This joint's doing very, very well. So we're going to just leave it like that, let it dry. As thin as this is, if you've got any air movement in the room at all, or if it's a nice hot day, this will dry in 20, 30 minutes, maybe an hour. Um, and you, then you can sand it, maybe touch it up again if you need to. Now, cleaning up of your knife and of your tray is just warm water. It'll come right off, just let it soak. So if you left some in your tray, just spill it full of water, let it soak, and it'll be fine. So that's our tip for today. Thanks for watching. Are you interested in woodworking or home repair? If so, please look at MaintenanceMinute.net. Hi, I'm Jim V. Brock, and I'm the host of Maintenance Minute. From my website, you can watch videos on how to build a variety of arts and crafts projects, full-on woodworking builds, and home repair and remodeling tips, too. We recently added an archive section where you can see over 40 years of projects that I have built. Please take a moment and visit MaintenanceMinute.net.